So video number three is about pseudo laws and rates. Again, each step, each state has a little bit different listing. Um, new imp and I'm not going to go over all right this. On page 5-13 and 5-14, it talks about the wage limitations and tax rates per state. So you can take a look at that on your own. Some of this I may actually just kind of go over. Um, I'm going to kind of skip over this stuff here. And then I'm going to kind of skip over this. So it terminate. So the bottom line is even though an employer terminates an employee, they're still liable for two years to pay unemployment. Okay. So that's why if you've ever filed for unemployment, they ask you to go back to your last two years of employers. And they're going to find the company that actually um, is what we call the main company that basically will be the one paying the unemployment. Okay, let's do some real life calculations. Okay, so this company uh, based in New Mexico has a pseudo tax rate of 4.2% and the pseudo wage base is 24,200. So that, that's, that's for the state, that's the wage base. During the year, we had foodable taxable wages of 109,500 and suitable taxable wages of 298,700. Okay. So here is, assuming they're not located in any state with a reduced credit. Now, here's a problem I see. We didn't talk about this. Uh, so SUDA for New Mexico is 4.2%. In reality, uh, the federal, they're showing at 6%. And I, I didn't look up that why that is because typically you don't go more than 6%. But I didn't look up the charts about what the states say about it. So you need to go back and take a look at that. So here's how it's actually calculated, okay? Taking this times this, this times this. So when it says taxable wages, food and taxable wages, these are all the wages that are subject to food tax, okay? Now remember, it's not telling us which employee already hit $7,000, but this is just a total of the wages that are taxable. Anybody who's already made the 7000 would not be in this lump sum. The same thing with this. Even though they have a base of 24200 the taxable wages for SUDA end up being this. This is a total combination of all of them. Okay, so the employer has to pay this money. These are called payroll taxes for the employer. They have to fill out a Form 940. It's due by January 31st of the next year. Sometimes they even might have to make deposits along the way. This talks all about filling out the form. I'm not going to cover filling out the form. Here are instructions on everything. And then they also have to maybe make quarterly deposits. So the FUDA has to be deposited quarterly if cumulative it's over $500. Okay, if it's less than 500, I can add it to the next quarter. But the minute the 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 minute my tax liability is 500 or more, I must do it by the last day of the month following the end of the quarter. And remember, calendar year: January, February, March, one quarter, first quarter; April, May, June, second quarter, and so on. Okay, if for the whole year I never get over 500, then I pay it at the year end. And this tells you how to pay it. Now, this is for FUDA. For SUDA, every state is different, but it kind of follows the same rule of thumb. It's based upon how much the employer owes as to when they actually are going to pay it. So I'm not going to go over all the details because each state is different. Okay. And then and this is just more information about that. Here's more information. And this is the end of video number three. This is kind of everything that we talked about. So I hope you guys enjoy this chapter. I personally really like it um, because people don't understand that FUDA and SUDA is paid by an employer and not an employee. So they, it's just a, a great understanding of how things really happen, what it really takes to be an employer today. Thank you very much for listening.